Hey everyone, Paul Alice here and welcome to part 2 of our Fujimi 124 Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG GT3 video build. Second time I've done this intro because I forgot to get record the first time. Went through all the way through to the end like an idiot. So here we are. Second time better though, eh? We'll do it better second time. So we're going to finish this kit today. It's all done. Um, mainly because I completely forgot how simple a kit this was. When I saw... Um, the photo I set, I thought this might be an in-depth build, might be good fun. I've built it before. I do not remember it being this simplified a kit. I enjoyed it the first time. I think I was a bit dis disappointed this time. And uh, yeah, we finished it in eight days, which I thought would have taken a bit longer. Um, but it is what it is. It looks okay. There's a few mistakes on it, and I might have skimped on a few parts. But we'll chat about that as we go through the build. So. Let's jump straight in and let's get cracking with what I love doing most, cleaning up parts. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos will always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Right then, so the obligatory clean up of parts. Now I've done most of these off camera, I will admit. There's quite a few parts, although it is a very, very simple kit. Um, I built this kit before and I actually forgot how simple it was. There's very little running gear um there's barely no interior to talk of really and you can't see the interior through the windows at the end anyway like i said I built it before I did the red dhl car uh, a few years back uh, i've got a few of these in the stash a few different schemes and uh, yeah i'd literally forgot to go to the stage just how simple a kit it is to be honest it's a little bit uninspiring in places especially the interior which we'll chat about a little bit more when we get to it later on but for now we've got all the parts off they're all cleaned up these wheel arches there's to, uh, part of every single one to glue in place which we've done then everything's mounted up uh ready for paint now one thing i did notice over the last few videos is on the overhead bench camera the white balance is a bit skew -iffy. this is the old camera in the spray booth and this is obviously how it used to uh look uh, i alter it about half through the video she sh should see an improvement in the white balance in a little bit so we've got some mr service of 1500 black uh umpa pex 0.35 a uh, needle 18 psi I'm just going to put a light primer coat down on the body and then we'll come show the chassis and we'll come back later on and put some LP5 or TS29 most probably on this. I've got quite a bit of TS29 to use so I've been using it on parts that aren't as critical um, to look as semi-gloss uh, and that's what most of these parts because most of this will not be visible. The only thing you will really see here is the inside of the wheel uh, arches and the brake calipers and that is it. So brake calipers, they are chromed, the weird chrome that Fujimi does. There's photo etch to go on them, so I opted not to strip them. To be honest, it could have quite easily left them as they are and just put the um, uh, PE on. But there's everything primed, ready for paint. So we're going to leave that overnight. Um, I'm going to leave the suspension center springs in the surface of black. And then we're going to mask it up and spray the rest of it silver. So using some of the Tamiya 1, 2 and 3 mil tape. And then in filling with the bigger tape, we're going to mask off each one of the shock absorbers. Uh, different ones, front and rear, as you can see, a little bit squatter and fatter on the uh, the front, I believe it is. Um, so just some careful masking. We can spray the top silver. To be honest, it, you can't really see it at all. So some of the work you're doing here is a bit fruitless because you can't see it at all. Uh, the silver parts we're spraying in TS17 uh, and decanted in that bottle in the background. Thinned about... 50% with Tammy like a theme of Retarder and our 0.2 like Apex uh, 18 PSI. A couple of light coats down on all the parts where required. Uh, the TS paints like to go on a little bit wetter, so don't be worried about putting a little bit more down than you think. Uh, and just a couple of parts of the uh, suspension system. Like I say, all this is hidden inside the car. You will not see any of this at all. And this is what I mean about it being a little bit. Just a little bit of. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Is it a bit of. Uninspiring is the word, isn't it? Um, overall, brake calipers I've opted to spray in um, Tamiya TS21. It is, it's in the bottle to the right. That's again thin 50%, 2 mil apex. 
and I sprayed the edges of the brake discs in TS17 and the centers are going in LP61. Um, we've got PE discs to go on, as you can see here, I'm just cutting off the rear ones. Um, all the others are off, ready to go. So we've got our Azuron PE shears here, cutting everything off. Be careful with this PE. Um, this kind of steel PE is absolutely razor sharp. I slit open my index finger on one of the sharp edges and it's probably one of the worst cuts I've had for pain ever. Wasn't even that deep, just absolutely agonizing, especially later on when painting. I've got lacquer thinner in there. And uh, let's just say that certainly woke me up. Definitely was uh, an eye opener for, uh, for sure. So like you say, cut off the PE, clean them up, uh, cut off the rest of the fret uh, points with your Zorons. And then we've got all the Tamiya PE diamond files here. We'll just go around and clean them all up. So like you say, this is why we sprayed the outside in TS-17 and the centers in LP-61, because this would give our brake disc appearance. And these are highly visible through the wheels later on. Again, I know from experience. So you're not going to see the edges, uh, but you will see the center of the hub and um, the brake disc itself. So, a few dabs of Loctite uh, CA glue. Get that in place. And then grab our disc. So there's four discs, two for the front, two for the rear. They are different, so they're hard to put in the wrong place. Get it centered once you're happy. Push it fully down. Make sure you don't get any excess CA glue splooging out. You can have that word, splooge. It's an officially made up Paul Bretland trademark word, splooge. Um, and that's it. Once you're happy with the central, if you get any excess seagull, you can wipe it off. Same for the rears as well. These are a nice addition. Once we get a time you're washing them, uh, they come to life. If you do get any excess seagull, get a little bit of acetone on a cotton board. One of these pointy ones that I use is perfect. Just gently rub away and it'll take off the excess seagull. Uh, just be careful on any plastic or painted parts because it will melt the plastic and or take the paint off. So be very careful. Be warned, acetone is not a nice chemical at all. Uh, I see a lot of people using this as airbrush cleaner. I would not like to spray this, uh, atomize this in the air at all. It is particularly nasty. So I'm happy using it very sparingly every now and then to get off of excess CA glue. But as long as you're careful, you won't get a lot of it everywhere. Um, and just some careful application, you'll get everything in place. So we've got the front and rear hubs now. Poly caps go in the wheels on this car. So there's nothing to go on the hub. A little bit of CA glue, a little bit out of focus here. I don't know what's happened. Um, get the um, actual disc in place. And obviously the calipers in half, we've painted them in halves uh, and then we can glue them in place over the top. So just be very careful, don't get say glue over your fingers, you'll end up getting all over the caliper and ruin all your hard work. Just take your time as usual and just uh, assemble it as the instructions call. And that's it, as simple as that. It's quite a good system this. If you weren't too keen on airbrushing, you could brush paint the hub Brush paint the caliper. Yeah, I'm explaining something here while we're live as well. Very important. And you can just put the PA on. That'll look great. Same on the rear hubs as well. A little bit of CA glue inside. Be generous. Don't go mad. But put enough in there to grip the part. And then push it in like so. And that should grip it fairly quick. And then again, a little bit of CA glue on the half caliper. And we can get the other side in place as well. So quite straightforward. Like I say, it's a very, very simplified kit. I really don't remember this when I built it the first time around. I remember enjoying it, but it was probably because of the speed I built it. I think I come into this thinking it was a little bit more in depth. I know for next time I've got four more of these in the stash, including the pace car one. I've got a few more schemes, so I know next time I want a really quick, easy build. We built this in eight days from start to finish. This is the way to go. And this is what I mean about the simplicity. So you've got the chassis floor pan. We've got suspension struts, our hubs with our brake calipers on, the steering rack, if you want to call it, and this subframe that goes on top. And that is it. There's nothing else. None of this can be seen anywhere. All we're going to see is the brake disc through the wheels. Um, so this is what I mean. A little bit around the span. When I got to this point, I was a little bit disappointed of how little there was to do. And this kind of determines what happens to the interior in a little bit because I've opted to not, I painted the, the interior, I opted not to fully detail it and put belts in it because you just can't see it through the windows. I've got to build one of these already. I had it out the case looking at stuff. Uh, I just thought you just can't see any of the hard work you will put into doing that interior. So I opted in a bit to not fully detail the interior. I think we prime and we paint it, sit the roll cage in, put some decal belts in. I know decal belts. Uh, and we left it at that. So, like I say, 
Next time we know, for a nice, quick, simple build, this is an ideal kit. The rear, again, suspension, just the hubs on the back, this A-frame, and really awkward suspension struts, which one of these comes loose later on. I can hear it rattle around in the car, but because the body is an absolute pig to get on, I wasn't taking it back off. So while I do think this is a good kit, I also think it's a bit of a pain at times as well. So we're both thinking on suspension wise, we're going to put some CA glue down on these points. A little bit too much there, but to be honest, the locating parts of these are huge, so it'll cover up any excess and we can wipe off any at all. They locate pretty positively, not too bad at all. So make sure you get it all lined up. Give it a quick squeeze, hold it for 10, 20 seconds or so. Let's make sure it's all fully glued in place and repeat that for all four corners. Now the wheels, again, we could have stripped these. Last time I did these, I primed them with the surface of black. I think I did anyway, and just sprayed over them. Um, this kind of chrome can be a bit difficult to remove. And if I remember when I tried to strip it last time, it wouldn't come off. So rather than all the hassle, why not just paint over it? You don't always have to strip the chrome. If the chrome's good, which this is, very high quality, just not the color I was looking for, um, you can prime over. So Miss Surface of 1500 black again, 0.35 apex, a couple of like coats all over. Getting all those angles and recesses in the back as well. Up the sides where the tires go on just to make sure we don't get any bare spots. And we can paint it in our color of choice, which I believe is going to be Mr. Hobby Super Stainless Steel. I think it was. I'll be honest, I've completely forgotten. I think it was then. So like I say, a couple of light coats, two, three light coats. Let it dry overnight and come back the next day and paint it. Meanwhile, we put some Tamiya Panoline wash on all the PE parts here. Like I said, these are the only parts visible on the whole kit. Even if you lift it up, there's nothing to see underneath, really. So just moving the excess with some Sansador, which is a Newton Odorless Mineral Spirit. Um, and it quickly takes off, leaving all that wash in the details, which they have the markings for drilled uh, and grooved discs on these cal uh, discs. So they do look good. Uh, they are highly visible through the wheel. For some reason, I don't know what's going on there, the focus. It's having none of it, but anyway. Uh, and then we've got some decals to go on the caliper as well. We've got some Brembo decals to go on. So there's four of them to go in place. Standard decaling procedure. Just get them in place, remove all the excess moisture. We'll hit these straight up with UMP Extra Strong because I know Fujimi decals are an absolute pain to set. So we'll go straight in with the strong stuff and get these set in place like so. So there we go, a water brush in, quick dip in some extra strong UMP decal solutions. Always shake your decal solutions. They do settle over time, so always give them a good shake. So these have been left overnight. The next day now, we have got some Mr. Hobby Super Metallic Super Stainless 2, I believe it is. Uh, I'm going to put down a couple of like coats. This has been thinned with the fast rapid thinner from Mr. Hobby. So the theory of this is the metallic flakes... Uh, Settle the top quicker because the paint dries quicker and gives a much more nicer metallic finish. Is that true? I've got no idea, but it works well. These are phenomenal paints. Some of my favorite metallics. Just a very limited range of colors. Uh, my old camera's up to its old tricks and not focusing, so I'll try to zoom in a little bit more on this video. You may notice throughout, we're getting used to it. Um, just on a few more videos, people are a lot more zoomed in, so I tried a bit more. The new camera over the bench is great. Doesn't tend to lose his focus. This old one still is not very happy about being zoomed in as much, but I think you can see the detail a bit better and see what we're doing. So I'm just quickly misting over, very light coat and all different angles, and that's our wheels done. And again, they can be left overnight. While we're here, we're going to put a coat of paint on the roll cage. It's previously been primed in Mr. Hobby um, Surface of Black. Uh, we're going to put a few light coats of TS17 down, just build up. Now, because you're going to waste tons of paint, don't go hosing the paint on. You can see I'm just lightly waving the uh, airbrush on like a complete madman, trying to get all the angles and spraying very, very light coats until you get a nice coat like this. And uh, yes, there we go. That's how painted up. Don't forget the TS paints like to go on a little bit wetter. So well worth just taking your time, build it up slowly with a final wet coat. Tires, nasty, nasty seams on these ones. So we've got our 240-1200 UMP black sponge. Uh, and we're going to town with the uh, harsher side, the 240 side. Um, in fact, I think the 220, are they? I forget now. Um, just to get rid of the seam, they are quite an intrusive seam on these. So just take your time, work your way around. Once you've got it cleaned up, make sure the tire's gone the correct way. There is no real way. Um, 
like so and pop them in place. I want to make sure your paint's dry, so I'd leave it overnight, any metallics. And I've got a few little excess pieces of rubber. I'm going to peel those off and out of the way. And there we go, there's one wheel. We'll repeat that for all four. And then each one's got a poly cap in. These are quite tricky to get in place. Not quite as well fitting as the Tamiya ones. But they do go in place. Um, push fully home at the end of my tweezers. They are in no problem at all. Front ones just slot on. I put a little bit of uh, airbrush lube on them because they were very tight. Rear one has a metal uh, axle that just slots through from one side to the other and they just push on. Really easy, really simple. We've got a resource in place as well and that's the chassis complete. Like I said, very boring, very bland. Um, we've got some grills now. So these all need priming and painting. So I'm just going around and getting them all cleaned up using our Zoron PE shears. Tamiya PE um, diamond file and go around get them all cleaned up and mounted ready for paint I've got a wooden stick tongue depressor whatever you want to call them behind me with some um, masking tape on that will mount it I'm just test fitting the parts this front one if you don't bend it or roll it rather curve it it will go in place with a bit of pressure but to make it easier you're better off just rolling it a little bit so it's an easy simple trick to do you don't need an expensive roller. I have one. I never use it because all I ever use is a UMP sponge sander, like so, and a micro brush. And just a quick roll. You ready? There you go. Job done. Simple, quick, and easy. Sounds a bit like me, although I'm not quick. I am easy though. Hmm. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's that one done. This one doesn't really need bending at all. Bit of a tricky one to get in place this one so take your time with this later on but we're going to mount them all ready for some primer and while we're here we might as well mask up the windows as well the kit comes with the supplied window mask which is always great uh, but none for the side windows which is a bit baffling because they need masking as well so why not give us them for the side windows don't get that at all uh, i have blood all over my index finger and paint all over my forefinger because I've been decanting paint and stabbed myself with PE. So a little bit of a yeah, collateral damage there from myself because I'm a bit of an idiot. But hey, as always with these masks, they either go on first time absolutely perfect, or as I'm about to find out here, uh, about the 10th time they'll go in place. But hey, this is how they work. Uh, I tend to get one side lined up and then work our way around to the other. That way, hopefully, in some miracle, we'll get it all masked up nice and evenly. Once you get the top line done and you're happy, you get the uh, little bubbles like I can just peel it back a little bit. Um, this is where I get my decal tweezers now to grip it. Eventually. And just get it up to get the uh, little bubble out like so. Lay it back down. Line up the back. Get all the back lined up in the side. And then all the others are follow suit all the way around. So... It's simple, but like I say, it's always the way. It'll either go on first time or it'll take about 10 goes. Front one went on pretty much straight away. And we've got a nice clean cotton board. And we're just burnishing down all the edges. Make sure we get no bleed through. Like I say, we then need to mask all the side windows with some masking tape. Why or why Fujimi just doesn't give you the mask? It'll make life so much easier. But hey, a little bit of Tamiya tape, some white tack on the roof of a cocktail stick. And we are ready for some paint. So we're going to paint the inside of the glass with Mr. Service of 1500 Black whilst we prime all the other parts. So we've got our 0.35 Apex. I'm just checking my finger. Yep, yeah, still bleeding. I need a wambulance and a plaster by the look of it. So 0.35 Apex, 18 PSI. Mr. Service are thinned about 50-60% with Mr. Hobby uh, level and thinner. Um, and just some light coats. You just want to build it up slow. Don't flood the surface at all because it's a possibility it'll seep under the masking tape. Just do a nice light thin coat. Keep it angled like this. You won't get any overspray on the sides and just take your time. Now, we only need to concentrate on the front and the rear parts. Anything in the middle is bothered by whether you get it or not. And you can't see it when it's in the car, so it doesn't matter that it's not all gonna be painted. As long as those front and rear screens uh, around the surrounds are painted, then we're all good. So just put some light coats down. By the time you've done one part and come back, the other part will be almost dry. That's how it works, and put it down until we do another coat, and then onto the PE, and exactly the same primer, same airbrush, same method. Nice light coats, don't go mad, just build it up nice and slow, put it down, we'll work around the other parts, and we can come back and give everything a second coat, 
later on. So we're just going to prime these today. Tomorrow we're going to put some LPE, sorry not, TS29 semi-gloss black on it. Uh, and that'll be the colour that you'll see on the car itself. And uh, here we go. After probably two light coats, that's done. And we can move on to all the other parts as well. So spoiler support. Um, we've got the uh, toe eye. We've got the rear lights. The grille emblem for the front. This part at the back, which I think is meant to be under the diffuser at the back. I forget now. Uh, the window wipers and a few other parts as well. This, we've got some Tamiya Fine Surface Primer decanted. Uh, it's white because we're going to paint this in body colour. I didn't realise till now. And then these are our towing eyes, which are going to be red. So prime all these in white, leave them to dry overnight and come back the next day. And spray the body part in the yellowy green and these parts in red. A couple of light coats, covers absolutely brilliant. I really do love the lack of primers at the minute, becoming more and more of a fan every time I use them. Um, they're just quick, fast, fuss free to use. Still absolutely love our primer, but for my purposes, this works absolutely perfect. Now this is a spoiler, we co uh, carbon decaled and kit decaled it um, earlier in part one. We've got some Mr. Hobby Semi Gloss Clear. I'm just gonna give it a semi matte finish. And then, uh, this is the next day now, we've got some TS29, it's been decanted, thinned with Tamiya like a thinner retarder. I'm going to put down a couple of like, coats of semi-gloss black down on all these parts. Nice and simple, while I'm using this, I've not got a lot of LP5 left. It can still be a little bit difficult to find, I've got quite a bit of this. It was already decanted, and it was the first bottle I reached for, so that is it really. Uh, you see our rapid thinner in the back that we use on our metallics as well. I'm just going around and giving all the parts that are meant to be black, uh, semi-gloss TS29. A couple of coats, building it up, 0.35 apex as usual, and just building up nice and slow. Really flawless paints to use the TS, you really can't go wrong. Uh, and then we've got some, uh, let me remember now, this is LP, must be 7 red. And a couple of lights, now, this is what I don't like about this kit. The real lights you got to paint red yourself. Uh, it would have been nicer if uh, Fujimi gave us that as a red part. And then this emblem piece of the front, several light coats of the zero paint to match the body colour. Looks like I'm putting a lot of paint down. I'm not. Most of that is missing it. Uh, they can all be left to dry while we polish up and uh, sand and polish the body. So with this clear coat, pretty good quick clear coat out the uh, the airbrush. So just going to rough it up with some 12,000 micro mesh. It's very, very fine micro mesh. I'm just taking any high spots off. There aren't really any. We had a little run there to deal with. That came out really easily. I'm um, just checking that it's gone. I'm just going to polish over that. Um, dealt with that exactly the same way I did with the MP4-5. And then not forgetting this front section as well, which we left off here as well. So we're just going to go around, basically kind of keying it, but we're not. And then we've got some Ultimate model Modeling Products uh, polish system. This is the compound on a nice clean cotton cloth. Uh, we're going to go around and just polish it all up. So the compound is a more aggressive polish. So we're just going to go around, all the way around, polishing it up. And then we come in with the polish, which is a more finer com uh, polish. And we can get it to a much nicer high shine. So as always, be careful of any edges, any raised areas, because it's surprisingly easy to burn through the paint, straight through to primer, or even down to burr plastic it's very very easy to do been there and done it got the t-shirt with the uh the paint all over it uh once we're done with the uh, compound get another clean cloth and wipe it all off um we're going around circular motions it's a dry cloth as well and uh, just try and get rid of as much of it as you can any less uh, any left behind we can get with a toothbrush later on quite simple really um and just take your time working things around now the two came up really well one thing i did notice is there's heat shields on the exhaust if you look at the other side not this side here the other side the decals lifted ever so slightly at the top um, you'll see it in a bit ump polish here same as the compound just going around polishing it all up this will give us a higher shine and get rid of any micro scratches in the finish back to the decal though the decal is probably lifted because it was on an edge and it probably wasn't quite set in place so user error one of those. These Racing 43 decals were absolutely flawless. They went down beautiful. It's ironic it's a Russian car with the current political climate, which I'm not even going to talk about. Uh, I started this a few weeks, a uh, week or so ago before any of this even kicked off. And do you know what? It only dawned on me about two days ago that it was actually the Russian racing team because 
I don't pay attention to this stuff at all. I really don't. I'm in my own little world thinking, this is a really pretty car. I'll build this. So, yes, no political comments, please. I don't do any of that. Um, it's just a pretty scheme I saw and thought I'll build that. But, yes, a bit unfortunate with the political climate. But, anyway, um, we've got some resin. Uh, resin. We've got some polished dust in all the raised and recessed panel lines. So, I'm just going to go through an old toothbrush and remove them. We've got our grill popping it in place, just test fitting it. A little bit of CA glue around the edge. Did try the UV glue. It was having absolutely none of it. It just wouldn't hold it in place. So a little bit of CA glue, a little bit of kicker on a micro brush. Just touch it. And there we go. Hold it in place. Perfect. No problem at all. And then we got our little emblem grill piece in the back for the little holes as well. And then we put a couple of dabs of CA glue on the back to hold that in place as well. Got a toe and eye that sticks at the top just there. There we go. And then we've got this very awkward piece of P at the bottom. It's a pig to put in place. Take your time with that one. Uh, and then we've got our grill to go over these front light areas here as well. So I've opted to use some glue and glaze. This has been left out for a while. Um, it gets tackier and tackier as it dries. It, it's still pretty wet here because this is how I wanted it. So I put a little bit around the edge. We haven't gone absolutely mad. I'm just wiping off any excess there with one of my ultra thin cotton buds. We get the PE the right way round. We just plop it in place. Move where we want it. It makes contact with the uh, gluing glaze. And that will glue that in perfect. Repeat that for the other side. The grills underneath are holding on with UV glue. So as always, my links to all these glues and that are found in the description of the video. There's a big long list of products that I use. They're all linked there. Uh, the UV glue, very handy for doing stuff like this. Just glue it in place, hit it with the UV uh, light and it dries in about 10 seconds roughly. So very, very handy tool. An excellent glue to have in the arsenal. Got a couple of P parts on the back as well. So we're just going to line them up. Once we've got it lined up, we'll come in with our uh, UV pen again as well. Just on the edge, we'll just grab the edge of it. It does tend to self-level, so it does take itself in to the areas, so it can grab parts like that. Now, this is the PVA-based uh, glue and glaze we had out before. It's gone really nice and tacky as it's dried. The tackier it gets, the more it grips. And we've got these canards, these winglets at the front. Uh, now, these are handed and specific top and bottom, so make sure you get them the right way around. I've already test-fitted them. The glue and glaze at this point has just got enough purchase to hold on to these things. So I was going to pop it in place, remove any excess from the top and bottom. And as you take your finger off, you'll see it move, but it will hold it. It will just hold it. And we can repeat that for all four of them. And there they are in place. Much, much better. There we are. We put that to one side to dry. Or as I did, move it to the left, knock it out of my hand, drop it on the floor and stick all four bits back on. Because that's what I tend to do. We've got these fuel filling rings, caps, whatever you want to call them. Again, that really nice tacky glue and glaze is proven very useful. Um, grab the PE part, pop them in place. You can let it dry a little bit more till it's got full purchase on the part. And then get a moist cotton bud, one of the really pointy ones I use. And it will get the rest of it off inside. But a lot less messy than CA glue. And using the back of the tweezers just to push it fully down. There we go, and then on the back, use a bit more of the uh, sticky glue and glaze to pop on this photo etch Mercedes emblem as well. There we go, nice touch that comes with all the photo etch in the uh, the kit itself. Not too bad. All you need to do about these parts is when you're polishing later, make sure you don't snag them with your cloth because they do disappear and vanish forever. Now, this is where the rear brake light would be. It's called our black, so I've painted it black. Um, we're going to pop it in place. It does go around one way. I'm just making sure I've got the beveled edge where it needs to be, which I have. There we go. Our decal tweezers again. A little bit of glue and glaze in place. Pop it in. It likes to stick to the tweezers as well because it's a pain. And just push it home. You can wipe off any excess should you require. And then the rear lights. So we put lacquer down on these uh, this morning. It's about four or five hours later. We've got some Vallejo Model Air Silver water-based paint. And we're going to paint in the lights as neatly as we possibly can. Without worrying too much. 
because if we moisten one of our rock hard thin cotton buds as you can see on the bench we can get any excess out quite easily like so and leave behind all the silver paint just where we need it so nice simple way of doing it water based over lacquer the water based paint is very very easy to remove so don't be worrying too much um what other way you could do you could mask it and spray it but this is for me it's the easiest way and then this is the a mistake i make so putting the front lights in i realize they won't go in till the bump is on because one of the locating points that pushes through here on this side that piece there holds the headlight in so i popped it all in place and then later on realized i should have painted behind the bumper where the grills are because you can see the yellow right through the grill so yeah a bit of a mistake but hey ho it's one of them the bumper was all glued in place and the lights i wasn't going to remove it so it's just lesson learned pay attention what you're doing if you change anything in the steps that you're doing it make sure everything else has been done as well because here we go here it is about to be glued in place forever so we get some CA glue on there we get a cocktail stick to get it all in the little hole around it and then some kicker you ready there we go that wasn't me that was the spray and then on a cotton uh, micro brush and that's it that ain't coming off not about breaking it so fundamental error the lights are in place we're getting the rear the lower spotlights fog lights in place where we're going to call them a couple of dabs of ca glue again they are handed make sure they go the right way round um and just glue them all in place like so so a bit of a fundamental error uh it was pointed out by uh one person in particular who's going to remain nameless because he's been named way too much in my videos lately um let's just say hmm yes could be a bit of a nosy parker possibly <sighs> might not like that i don't know we'll find out um but yeah fundamental error rushing not rushing but trying to be um competent in putting the lights in never even thought to paint behind the grills and uh, you can see it but hey it's one of those what can we do all the lights are in place now all the photo etches on the front we're going to pop in the glass now with fujimi quite often the lower part of the glass the side windows will clip in place if you've 2 k you need to be very careful because it can push the 2k out now what i found was there wasn't all that much room for the whole window to go out but it needed to click in place or as the glass sat too low but I found by just manipulating it enough, it caught the edge, and that was perfect. That's exactly where it needed to go. So just a little bit of gentle persuasion, like so. And there we go, we're in place. And what we'll do, we'll secure it with some CA glue and put it in a couple of strategic places where it can't be seen and glue it in place. But yeah, just give it a little bit of a push. Once the side window catches, that's it, it's perfect. It doesn't have to go all the way through. I don't think it's meant to go all the way through. I just think it needs to catch on one point as it does there. Like I say, a little dab of CA glue here and there where it can't be seen at all. We'll hit it with some kicker again and hopefully that will be glued in place forever. Never need to come back out. Masker went great, no overspray, no problems at all. Like I say, you can see on the roof, people are going to be saying, oh, why don't you paint the headliner? Well, this wouldn't have a headliner for a start and you can't see it. You really can't see it at all. Um, there is so little room through the windows. All you'll see is the back of the seat and the steering wheel. That's it. It's very hard to see in here, which is why I've made the decision to not go mad with the interior. Rear toe and I in place, a little dab of CA glue. The interior is in. It's all painted up. I've put some decal seatbelt on the seat. The roll cage is in. It is all there. Uh, it calls out for masking and painting all the ECUs and that. Trust me, unless you really want to do it, you cannot see it at all. And I opted to do what I would call the lazy way on this one because I wanted this one out of the way. This is a quick build um so yes i opted to do this so shoot me they can't all be fully built uh it is built it is painted it's just not in my opinion kind of worth the hassle for something you cannot see at all sometimes i'll do it sometimes i won't and this is one of those ones where i opted not to do it now this body shell is a little bit tricky now you see about the paint behind the grills they should be black i'm an idiot but hey whatever it is what it is um the body shell is quite tight getting in so make sure you get the front in first and then you can finagle another word you can have the back in uh the front clicks down quite positively the back needs a little bit of work to get it in 
but it is doable and if you get stuck a little bit of say glue will hold it in place anyway but you should be just fine just take your time don't go mad don't be pressing too hard like a bloody gorilla uh, but it will click in place something will give and it'll click so it is held in quite positively by the rest of the body parts it's at this point now something came off inside and i'm convinced it's one of those suspension struts and for some reason this rode a bit high on the front i've built this before the front wheel should sit just like the back just in the arches for some reason i got a bit of a gap on mine and i do not know why at all everything is lined up correctly on the front the wheels are in their hubs properly there's our rear spoiler assembled ready to go and i've no idea what's up with it at all but hey it's one of those it's off the bench it's out the way and it looked all right lights now actual light lenses we clean them up we've got our editing marker pen we're going to go around all the edge that will simulate headlight rubber so worth doing this step it adds a bit of depth to the model careful application just go around gently uh run it around there you go we'll repeat that for all the glass parts there's only four really And there we are, that's that done. Like I say, we'll repeat that for all the others. And then get them in place, we've popped them in. We've got some Alclad Aqua Gloss on a fine Winsor Newton brush. Loaded the brush up with the Aqua Gloss and we're letting the capillary action carry the clear varnish all around the clear parts. And this will act like a glue and neatly hold everything in place. So as you can see, we pop the light in. Oh, or on the floor rather. Get there in the end. Oh, dropped it again. Third time's a charm, isn't it? There we go, in place. Load up our brush. Looks like a lot, I'm just gonna wipe off the rest. There we go. And just touching the capillary reaction, exactly the way glue works, will travel around the light and that will glue it in place. More than adequate. And any excess you can wipe, wipe off later with a cotton bud. It's a good way of doing it, good little trick to learn. It does move, you can push back in, you can see the fluid around the sides and then same on the back as well pop them in place and then use the aqua gloss to hold the parts in place so the capillary action works really well and there we go like i say we repeat that for the other side and i've done this on numerous occasions and it holds the lights in absolutely perfect as long as you let it dry adequately, it's just like using a glue. It holds them in great. So I've shown this before. It's not my tip. I picked it up off somebody else. I can't remember where from. But it's a handy one for doing things like this because a lot needs to be using CA glue. And even some of the PVA-based glues can leave marks. Window wipers. Now we have some of that very, very tacky glue and glaze here we used earlier. I put a little tiny dab on the window wiper itself. Popped it in place. Same on the other side. These are quite positive. They're going quite well. There we go. That's that in. Absolutely perfect. Looking good. Now, rear spoiler. A little bit tricky. Actually fell apart on me when I was putting it together. So I opted on putting the support in first. And then popping the spoiler on the top. Making sure it's straight. Be very careful when you glue it this time. Because you will pull those decals off. And there we go. There's a spoiler in place. So leave the support off. Put the spoiler on last. And then just a few decals to go on. So we've got the sun strip to go on. Some tire decals. And Alan, very kindly, made me some of the aero catches for the bonnet, boot and boot lid as well. Uh, the kit didn't come with any. Uh, I've gone around them with panel liner. You can see them on the front of the bonnet. I tried to hand paint them. They looked awful. So Alan very kindly scanned some of his and I think he enlarged them to be honest. Or did he shrink them? He might have shrunk them, actually. Um, and they've went on perfect. Got caught around the carrier film because they're home-printed decals. But they went on great. Now, on the tyres, we've got some BBS emblems for the wheels. I hope these are BBS wheels. I think they are. And then some Pirelli markings for the tyre themselves as well. So, again, standard decal procedure. Get it in place. Get all the moisture out. Hit it up with the... Uh, we use a Strong on this one. Uh, I did want to move it as little as I could because as you see when you do the smaller decals move so loaded up the brush kind of swamped them in it and uh, these dried really nice and matte on the tyre no problem at all and as I say if you move them like that just be very quick and just gentle 
popping them back in place and then just leave them be and let them set of their own accord. Mirrors, obviously these were 2K at the time we did the 2K. There's photo etch inserts, we've got a bit of that really, this is new glue and glaze now actually. Um, in, just run it around with a cocktail stick, push the mirrors in place with our tweezers, and that's those done. We can then cut them off and clean them up. A very careful strategic dab of CA glue. I have used glue and glaze before, today it was having none of it at all. So I opted for the do or die glue in place with the CA glue. So you've got to be very positive here. Get it in place, hold it, hold it, hold it, rest your arm, and then get your fingers off, let it rest. That's it. And then gingerly position it where you want it, and then gently move your fingers away when you're happy, like so. And then same on the other side. Just be very positive here. If you drop it, you'll put a CA glue streak down the side of the car. So... Be very positive in doing it. And these are the bonnet catches Alan made. These went down absolutely great. Obviously, because they're home printed, they're on a full um, sheet of carrier film, so you've got to cut as close as you can to them. And uh, Yeah, thank you, Alan, for sorting this, mate. Much appreciated, as always. And just the finishing touches to the body. So although we kind of skimped out a little bit on the interior, the running gear was a bit vague and boring, the rest of the kit's good. It's a nice, simple, quick build. Eight, eight days start to finish, and I think it's turned out right. It's a good-looking car. Bit disappointed I forgot to paint inside the grills black, but hey, it is what it is, isn't it? It's done now. I'd ruined the uh, bumper by taking it off, so it's done. It's riding a little bit high on the front. I've got absolutely no idea how, because the chassis is all in place properly. The hubs, uh, the arms where the hubs sit is attached to the chassis, so there's no way it can do it. And I looked and checked and just couldn't see why it was doing it. So, hey, it is what it is, but she's finished. On my scale production background, looks really, really good. Very, very striking colour, which you can only really see when it's on its black background. And it is a very nice, vibrant colour. Pretty car. Like I say, a bit unfortunate not to be the Russian racing team at this particular moment in time. But, hey, I have no political notions or movements. You can see where that decal's lifted a touch on the exhaust at the side. Um, no pushing that back, 2 k's dry, so you've got no hope in getting that back. So always set your decal solutions properly, and I normally go next um, power up, so this should have had the extra strong on it at the end, but it didn't, and you pay the price by decals lifting like that. So lesson learned, it is one of those. Uh, but overall, I think it came out all right. It's a good-looking car, very, very striking scheme. I really wish I painted behind those grills, but hey, it is what it is. It's just one of those, isn't it? Uh, but it's another kit off the bench. It was a quick interim build. I know for future reference to be prepared for a quick build. So if we're looking for a quick week build, do this. I don't remember this kit being this simple, but it really is a very, very simple kit. I've got four more of them in the stash. Um, so yeah, you will see more of these. So as we said, we primed this in Tamiya White Primer. It was a Zero Vietti colour paint. Racing 43 decals. Uh, Gravity Spain 2K clear. Bit of carbon decal for the spoiler from Scale Motorsport uh, and various LP and TS paints used throughout. We polished all the bodywork up with the Ultimate Polish system, and um, there we are. There's build number, I don't know what build of the year this is yet. So uh, let's go back to me for some final thoughts. Right then, there we are then. So overall, it turned out well. Uh, I'm gutted I didn't paint behind that grill. Really am. Alan pointed out to me today. Uh, I'd already seen it, and uh, yeah, I do more harm than good taking a bumper off. It's just not worth ruining it for what is a stupid mistake from me because I was fitting the bumper to fit the light rather than fitting the bumper to fit the bumper because otherwise I'd have been focusing on the front of it rather than the back, and I would have saw it and thought, oh, I need to paint that, and I didn't because I'm an idiot. So, hey-ho, did I paint this side of, inside of my red one? Yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> so there you go lesson learned there pay attention to what you're doing not the other things you're doing because rather than focusing on the bumper i've spoken on the lights because as i said in the video the lights needed to go on with the bumper so silly mistake by me and that ride height i've got no idea what is causing that at all the body's a bit of a tricky one to get on um i've got the front assembled perfectly the front i've got locating points for the body they're in perfectly the front hubs attached to the uh, frame on the chassis 
The chassis mounted perfectly to the body, and yet the car is riding too high. My only thought is, have I put something in upside down? But I don't think it's possible because I think the locating lugs, roundel parts, were sized for the top and bottom. So I'm completely bewildered. I've no idea what it was. Um, but one thing I did notice was I don't remember being this simple at all. Really don't. And I think it kind of not put me off, but I was kind of a bit disappointed with the build a little bit. I was like, oh, is this it? Because there's nothing to it. I knew the interior was a tricky one because I built it before. There's lots of tricky masking to do inside, and you cannot see it at all. Have I got the red one out? Um, you can't see for the windows on it at all. Um, the, the most you can see is the seatbelts, and even that I kind of skimmed on and put decals on, which I don't normally do. But I think at this stage, I was at this point with the build, I just wanted it done. But I've got four more of these, including this pace car, safety car, uh, with different schemes. If everyone a quick build, I know next time to come in with it. The P edition with the kit is an essential, I would say. It gets rid of the horrible plastic parts that come with the kit. Adds a great deal of detail, especially the brakes, which are a highly visible part of the kit. So well worth doing. Um, so it's a good kit. I think I just went into it with the wrong frame of mind. I think it was going to be a bit more of an involved build. And I think I was just a bit disappointed. I think that's what kind of did it to me. A little bit, felt a little bit let down. But I know in future, if I want a quick build, like my beautiful BMWs, my M3s from BMAX New New. Love them. Now I can knock them out really quick. Nice, simple, easy to build kit. This is another one like it. The Porsche um, GT3 R is the same as well. Uh, they're a great looking curbside kit, and that's exactly what they are. And if you go to it with that frame of mind, you'll end up with a beautiful model. This looks great. I love it. Uh, it's a very striking scheme. Like I say, very unfortunate it's a Russian racing team at this particular moment in time. I don't do political at all i do wish the greatest of luck to anybody involved in that conflict and um, my thoughts go out to anybody in ukraine or involved in this in any way shape or form um but i don't get involved in this because publicly i don't speak about it because it never goes well does it put politics religion talking about publicly always gets people's knickers in a twist so yes all i can do is send my thoughts that way just unfortunate it was this way but it is what it is, isn't it? It's not like I'm supporting what they're doing. It's just a model I was building at the time. So, yes. Um, but, yeah, enjoyed it. Came out okay. Nice, quick build. Ideal for what I wanted. I wanted a bit of a gap filler. Um, and for that extra work I thought they were involved, would have taken us right up to the first, could start the F15. So, that's where I was a little bit disappointed, I think. But it gives me time to prepare and get ready mentally because... Now, I have two of my Nemesis on the go at once. Bikes and aircraft especially are two of the things I struggle building. The bike I've been enjoying, the bike route to the framework and the swing arm. We'll get back to the bike after doing part one of the F15, which is starting on the first. But planes, I've got a real mental block. I will get the cockpit done, all the fuselage, and I'll lose interest, kind of like I did with the P51. But it's there. The p 51 is still here. I still want to get back to it. I'm hoping this gives me a bit of a kick up the arse to go back to it. If we can get this built, the pressure of the group build may or may not help. The pressure of doing it in honor of Gary may or may not help. But I will try my best to get it done. And that's the plan. So, build number... What is that? Five? What, what have we built this year so far? I've lost track now. I cannot remember. Corvette. Super B. What else have we done? Shout out, you know. Quiet at the back. I can't remember. No idea where I built this year. Can't remember. Uh, but it's another build off the bench, another build in the display case, which is getting ever full again. Um, so I will get another car on the go um, probably in the next week or so. I want to get the part one of the F15 done first. It's only a 172 kit. I've already reviewed the kit. It's on the channel. You can go back and look. Uh, I'd like to get part one of that up and then part two of the bike up, and then get back to doing the car, I think. I think that'll be the good mojo to get back and then just rotate around them until we're done. That's the plan. So there we are. Enough waffle from me. Um, as always, like to support the channel. There's a Patreon me, a PayPal me, link in a bar me, coffee link in the description down below. All your um, support go towards keeping these videos going because without them, there'd be no videos at all. And as always, check out all the, the uh, list of products in the description down below. And all the links to ISM Facebook and forum, umpretail.com, 
uh, the bench page off a hangout group, the group build page, my poor ISM page as well. Um, make sure you sub to the channel, give the video a thumbs up or thumbs down should you wish, and click that bell notification to get notified of all the latest videos. And please leave a comment. Love reading all the comments. Always appreciate everyone takes the time to read the comments. Uh, and I always heart them back unless I answer you. You're lucky if I answer you though because I'll be there all day answering people. I just get quite busy in the comments. Um, and uh, yeah, let me know. What kit have you gone into anticipating it being a bit more involved and a little bit disappointed how it either turned out as a kit or how simple a build it was? What was your biggest letdown in modeling? Don't say me because I'm the biggest letdown to everybody. I know that. Uh, what was your biggest letdown in modeling? Let me know in the comments down below. If you got this far in the video, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the night, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.